Welcome back. So I just also want to add the create. We'll, we'll skip the update and delete for now. I'll get back to those later because they're a bit more complex. But I want to add the create and then I want to kind of start using this new setup um, in a second. So let's try and do the create. Let's try and jump back to our customer repository and find the create. And there it is. It seems that normally we just find some kind of new ID and we add the customer to the database and we return the customer when we're done. Let's see if we can do something similar. Let's just copy this again to kind of have something to reference. And let's just remove the old. Uh, the not implemented information right here. Let's just paste this in here. Now, how do we do this now? Well, actually, it's a lot easier because we don't have to worry about IDs. We have an SQL database or MySQL or something like that that takes care of figuring out IDs. So we don't have to do the first step. This is gone. We don't need that anymore. Now we need to add it. So we, let's try and see what we can do with the context. So we'll say context.customers. That's the table we want to add this in. And we'll say add. Really? Seriously? And I can say customer. And now I've actually added a customer. Now I can do one more thing. I can actually get back the information about the customer I just added. So let me just make a local reference right here. Just call it cost. And I'll actually say dot entity in the end. And that actually returns the actual customer that was just added for me. Right? Um, so let's just try and do that. And in the end, I'll just return the customer. Now this is almost enough. But the difference between the old fake database where we worked in memory, pretty much meaning as soon as I did this, it would be instant, it would happen right away. This hasn't happened yet. It, it hasn't been done yet. It's just we prepared an SQL query that we can use to kind of save this to the database later. And that's because we can start doing a lot of things before we actually make the actual SQL query. So we could add multiple customers and then say, now save it in the database, right? So. What we need to do in the end is always when we make changes to a database, we need to end up by actually saving the changes. That makes sense, right? So I explain to the context when I'm done doing all the different things I want to do, in this case it's very similar, I only want to add something, then save the changes, right? And when we're done, return the customer that was just saved. So that's it. Now you guys can actually also create customers. You can read them and you can read all. So that's enough for us to start testing if this actually works in our entire solution. So next lesson, what we're going to do is we're going to change inside our startup and we're going to get rid of the old static way and start using the new uh, way of actually generating data. So that's it for this lesson. See you next time. Have fun.